the winepress of Armageddon. Let the nations be roused from their places, and let them come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit in judgment over all the nations on every side. Send forth the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come down into the winepress, for it is full and the vats overflow. For great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of doom. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of doom. Joel 3, 12 through 14. The valley of Jehoshaphat, mentioned only here in Scripture and meaning the Lord will judge, is a poetic designation for the system of ravines and wadis sloping down from Jerusalem generally westward and branching off to the north and south as well. As the natural highways of approach, these areas will be filled with Antichrist's forces, from his forward combat units to their rearmost logistical tails. The Lord is angry with the nations. His wrath is upon all their armies. He will totally destroy them. He will give them over to slaughter. Their slain will be thrown out. Their dead bodies will send up a stench. The mountains will be soaked with their blood. Isaiah 34, 2 and 3 As this passage shows, the slaughter will not be limited to the network of valleys to the west of Jerusalem, but will cover the entire area wherein the forces of Antichrist are amassed. Since the ridges separating the valleys are the high ground, whereon the defense will no doubt be concentrated, these obviously cannot be ignored in the assault on Jerusalem. We may expect some of the best shock units to be assigned the task of clearing the ridges, working their way towards Jerusalem in this manner. The total area of deployment necessary for assembling the world's armies and organizing an attack on the entire Judean hill country will thus of necessity be quite large indeed. The book of Revelation itself gives some very specific details about the extent of this wine press or killing field, the place of the last stand of the devil's earthly armies under his son the beast. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from before the altar, the one having authority over the fire, that is, of judgment, and he shouted in a loud voice to the angel with the sharp sickle, saying, Send forth your sharp sickle, and gather up the clusters of the earth's vineyard, because its bunches of grapes are ripe. And the angel cast forth his sickle onto the earth, and he gathered up the vintage of the earth, and threw it into the great winepress of God's wrath. And the winepress was trodden down outside of the city, and blood from the winepress went forth up to the horses' bridles for a distance of twelve hundred stadia, that is, approximately 143 miles. Revelation 14, 17 through 20. Centered on Jerusalem, this distance covers from the northern part of contemporary Israel, from a point roughly even in latitude with the Sea of Galilee, to a point some twenty miles south of the southernmost extremity of the Dead Sea. God will come from Teman, even the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory will cover the heavens, and His praise will fill the earth. His splendor will shine forth like the light itself, that is, brighter than the sun. Rays of light will shoot forth from His hand, and there His hidden power will be revealed. Plague goes before Him, and bolts of lightning follow in His train. He will take His stand, then take the measure of the earth. He will take in the sight, then cut off the nations. Habakkuk 3, 3 through 6. Teman and Mount Paran are located in the Negev, or alternatively in biblical Edom, south of the Dead Sea and thus south of Jerusalem, and mark the southern boundary of the beast's major military deployments. In these verses we see our Lord's campaign of annihilation of the armies of Antichrist being carried out in complete consonance with the other passages quoted, Only here, the direction of the assault is made clear, it will begin with the southern flank of Antichrist's armies and finish in the north, exactly as in the case of Joshua's campaigns to occupy the Promised Land, Joshua 6 through 12. I will drive the northern army far from you, pushing it into a parched and barren land, with its front columns going into the eastern sea and those in the rear into the western sea. And its stench will go up, its smell will rise. Surely he has done great things. Joel 2.20 the armies of the beast are described in toto here as northern, because that is the compass point from which most of them will enter into the land of Israel. Here we see the reaction of the nations to the terrifying sight of our Lord in all his glory, cutting a wide swath through the very heart of their army. 
In their crazed panic, many will flee to the west and northwest and perish in the Mediterranean Sea, while many others will flee to the southeast and perish in the Dead Sea, again reminiscent of the panic and demise of the Egyptian army. See, the name of the Lord comes from afar, with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent, rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sieve of destruction. He places in the jaws of the peoples a bit that leads them astray. Isaiah 30, 27 and 28. Still others, fleeing from the advancing terror, will flee into the trackless desert of the Negev, directly south of Jerusalem, far from any civilized habitation. Ezekiel 39.11 describes a probable specific concentration of the slaughter of the southern wing, the valley of Hammon Gog, that is, Gog's multitude, which will be given as a burial place generally for the remains of Antichrist's soldiers in order to cleanse the land of ritual pollution. Ezekiel 39.12-16 through 16. Connecting the idea of the winepress with this otherwise unknown southern valley, we may perhaps identify it very tentatively as the Great Crater, or more literally, Great Mortar, south of present-day Demona, a geographical feature which resembles an ancient winepress, and whose general location, orientation and physical features certainly fit a scenario which finds a large portion of the southern wing of the beast's army pouring headlong into this inescapable killing field in a manner comparable to their comrades, rushing into the Dead Sea to their deaths. The following summarizes the information we are given about the Messiah's campaign, the wine press of Armageddon. After splitting the Mount of Olives and securing the safe retreat of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, our Lord will pass over Jerusalem, Isaiah 31, 4 and 5, breathing courage into its defenders and sowing intense panic in the hearts of its assailants. Then he will begin his campaign of destruction, heading first to the south and the slaughter of the southern winepress, turning then to the north and the remaining wing of the beast's army, all the while driving the terrified survivors fleeing in a deranged panic to their deaths in the eastern and western seas, and ending his flying campaign of slaughter in Jerusalem, where all his enemies destroyed, he will take his seat in the temple as the true Messiah to rule Israel and the entire world from Jerusalem during his blessed millennial reign. Between the swift sword which will proceed from our Lord's mouth, the inspired counterattacks of the Jewish army, the plague that will smite down many who will rot while yet standing on their feet, and the uncontrollable madness and panic which will drive the rest into the waters of the Mediterranean and Dead Seas westward and eastward, the forces of Antichrist will be utterly destroyed. There will be no survivors.